If you're a beginner to yoga or a beginner to yin yoga and you want to just chill out for a while, relax and get a nice deep stretch into your hips, then this yoga practice is for you. For this practice, you might need a yoga block, but if you don't have a block, you can always use a cushion or a pillow instead. So press pause if you need to, go ahead and grab something that you can sit on on the mat and then we'll get started with our practice. So for our first pose today, we're gonna to do butterfly pose. This is where you can take your block or your cushion or pillow and sit up on it. So when we elevate the hips a little bit, it does open them up, making it a bit easier to get into some of the poses that we're gonna do for this practice. So you can bring the soles of your feet together, making a big diamond with your legs, and then gently rest your hands on your feet or maybe on the mat in front of you. So if your knees are protesting a little bit here, you can always take cushions or yoga blocks in underneath to give them a little bit of support. Now you can stay upright here, or if it feels good, you can start to fold forward as if you're trying to touch your belly button towards your heels and then drop your nose towards your feet. Now, of course, it doesn't matter how this pose looks. We're just focusing on how it feels. And then once you feel settled in your butterfly pose, we're gonna stay here for about three minutes in total. So just breathe normally. Sending your inhalation down into that tightness that you might be feeling within your hips. And then each time you exhale, you're just carrying that tightness out of your body. So yin yoga is quite a slow and soft practice. Holding the poses for a little bit longer like this helps to work into our ligaments, into the fascia, into our joints, and it even helps with the bones as well. And some people might find yin yoga a little bit boring or passive, but you will notice that this type of practice can be quite challenging. And the real challenge here is to hold the pose for the duration of time and to keep your mind focused on the practice. So what's completely normal is for the mind just to get bored here and to go into the past or into the future. But we want to try our best just to keep it here in the present. And you can do that just by following your breath in and out of your body or by using these sensations that you're feeling within your hips to keep yourself anchored here on your mat. You can take your hands back onto the floor if they're not already there and then slowly start to push yourself away from your mat, rolling your spine back up. So we'll release the pose. You might need your hands here to help bring the knees back to center. And we'll do a few windshield wipers. So feet can be about hip distance apart. You can lean back on your hands and then with an exhale, drop your knees to one side. Inhale to lift to center, exhale to drop to the opposite side. 
So just getting rid of any leftover residue of tension from your hips. It can be like a little massage for your lower back and your hips. Now when you're ready, we'll make our way into our next pose. So you can stay sitting up on your block or your cushion and then take your feet as wide apart as is comfortable for you. We're making our way into a pose called straddle. So again, hands can come to rest on the mat in front of you, or it might be more comfortable for you to take them behind you and just gently lean back on them. That's fine too. If it feels good, you might start to fold forward again, walking your hands away from you, dropping your head towards the mat. So we have lots of options here in this pose. If you feel though your knees are a little bit uncomfortable, you can always engage your quads here to lock the knee joint. You can keep your knees bent, especially if you have tight hamstrings, and you can even have the soles of your feet on the mat here. So feel free to experiment See what works for you and then once you're ready to settle back down into your pose we're going to stay here for three minutes again so find your breath notice wherever your thoughts are and if they have drifted away take them back here to your body wherever attention goes energy flows so keep your focus on your hips send all your energy in there and that's going to help to release the tightness to open them up and to help you feel nice and relaxed With time, your body might invite you to get a little bit deeper into the pose. And if it does, you can use your inhalation to lengthen through your spine. Then each time you exhale and your lungs are empty, you might be able to sink your nose a little bit closer to the floor. For the last minute or so in this pose, you might start counting your breath again. In for five, out for five. Using your next breath in, you can push yourself away from the floor, rolling your spine back up. When you're ready then, take that bend into your knees. We'll do a few windshield wipers, exhaling to drop, inhale to lift, exhale to the opposite side. So try to keep the connection to your breath here moving your knees at the same pace that you're breathing. And then when the knees are back in center, we'll pause and we'll make our way into our next pose. So we're still sitting up on our block or our cushion if you have one, but this time legs are out long in front of us, feet together. Coming into caterpillar pose now, take a big breath in and reach your fingers up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, hinge forward at your hips and just drop your hands down wherever they land next to your legs or maybe on top of your legs. And then 
sinking your nose towards your knees. Options here, if your legs are feeling very tight, is to take a bend into your knees. Just like with our previous pose, each time you breathe in and your lungs fill up with air, it might lift you out of the pose, but each time you exhale and your lungs are empty, you might be able to sink your nose a little bit closer to your knees. Feeling that stretch within your hips, maybe your legs, your back. You might even notice it up around the back of your shoulders as well. So keep your attention in your body. Keep following your breath. And we'll stay here for three minutes in total. Your next breath in can lift you back up into your seat. You can take a moment here just to shake off your legs. Maybe it'll feel good to circle your shoulders. Now from here, we'll come into a half shoelace. So you can start by bringing your right foot over beside your left hip. Knees are stacked relatively on top of each other. And if you need to, you can really pull back this right foot to get it beside your left hip. So once you've found a way that's comfortable for you, we're going to stay here for three minutes. Now this is a half shoelace. If you want to come into the full shoelace here, you can bend this bottom knee as well to bring that left foot over somewhere beside the right hip. And it'll look something like this but that's completely optional. For this beginner yin yoga class, we'll stay in our half shoelace today. So if you want to go a little bit deeper into this pose, you can start to fold forward, walking your hands away from you, maybe dropping your nose towards that top knee. Find your breath again. Observe the sensations that this pose is bringing.
this is quite an intense pose, especially for beginners. So if you need to come out of the pose a little bit, feel free to do so. It can often be easier just to keep your spine up straight here. And keep tapping into your body, into your breath. Each time you notice that your mind has drifted away, just gently close the door on those thoughts and come back here to the body. We'll gradually start to release ourselves from this pose, taking both legs out long again. Shake off the legs if you need to. And then when you're ready, we'll repeat it on the opposite side. So this time your left foot is coming across to somewhere beside your right hip. Straighten up the spine and stay here or you can start to fold forward, releasing your nose towards your top knee. Breathing deeply, sending your breath into your hips. The great thing about yin yoga is that it really forces us to Spend some time with ourselves. So just challenging your mind. And the great thing about yin yoga is it really forces us to sit with ourselves, with our body, with our minds. And the only job we really have here is just to observe to observe the body, see how it feels, and to observe the mind, see where it tends to go. And you can acknowledge those places that it goes, but then invite your mind back here onto your yoga mat. And the more we practice this, the stronger and the faster we'll get at taking ourselves back. So when we're off our yoga mat and in the real world, and we get triggered by certain things or our mind starts to take us to places that doesn't really serve us, we'll get very strong and very quick at just coming back and not getting caught up in those thoughts that don't serve us. Let's take one more big breath in and out here. And once you're ready, you can start to release your left leg, make it long again, shake them off if you need to. Now from here, we'll make our way into downward facing dog. So you can swing those feet back behind you. We'll remove our block or cushions for now. Spread your fingers wide apart and then bring your hands towards the front of your mat. Curl your toes onto the mat, lift your knees and then start to drag your hips up and back. So you can have a bend in your knees here. You can even paddle out your feet to stretch through your legs. We won't be holding this pose for a long time, just a few breaths. With time, you might be able to point your tailbone towards the ceiling 
release your head towards the mat. So maybe your ears are in line with your biceps here. Take a nice big belly breath in and out. And then exhaling, drop both knees to the mat. When you're ready, bring your left foot forward in between your hands, making our way into a nice simple lunge here. The top of your back foot can come onto the mat. And if you want more of a stretch here, you can slide your back knee back a little bit more. If at any point your knees feel uncomfortable on the mat, you can always fold over your yoga mat to create more padding, or you can have a blanket in underneath your knee here. You're welcome to stay here in this lunge. It's gonna be a great way to open up the hips. Or if you wanna take it a little bit further, we'll come into a pose called dragon pose. To do this, take your left foot to the outside of your left hand and have it on a 45 degree angle. So toes are spilling away from the mat. Shoulders are directly above your wrists. Fingers spread nice and wide. And you can gently grip the mat here with your finger pads. And that's gonna to help to protect your wrists. Now we'll only stay in dragon pose for two minutes. It is quite intense. To help you to keep focused and settled here, you might just bring your vision to gaze at one point and just challenge yourself to stay focused on that point. Or if it feels good, you can close your eyes here, find your breath, and just keep focusing on those sensations. A bit of a challenge here for the upper body as well. If you have yoga blocks, you can always rest your hands onto your blocks and that's gonna help to relieve a little bit of pressure from your upper body. You're almost there. Really tempting to just take yourself out of the pose here, but unless you're feeling pain, just stay with it. You can do it, I promise you can. One more big breath in and out. And when you're ready, we'll slowly start to undo the pose. So taking that left foot back in between your hands and then eventually making your way back to downward facing dog. Left foot coming back towards the back of the mat, hands towards the front of your mat, fingers are spread wide. Curl your toes onto the mat, lift your knees, drag your hips up and back. And taking a moment here just to let your body release the pose. Keep a bend in your knees. Take one more big belly breath in. And on an exhalation, knees can come back down onto the mat. We'll repeat on the right side now. So step your right foot forward in between your hands, maybe sliding the back knee back and bring the top of your back foot onto the mat. And again, you're welcome to stay here in your lunge or to take it into dragon pose. Walk that right foot to the outside of your right hand have it on a 45 degree angle, spread your fingers wide, gently grip the mat with your finger pads. Find a point to focus your vision on or close your eyes. And try your best here just to settle into dragon pose for the next two minutes.
one more big breath in and out. And then when you're ready, start to make your way out of the pose, eventually making your way back into downward facing dog. Exhaling to drop both knees onto the mat. This time you can bring your hips into the center of your mat. We'll make our way back down to lie on our backs. Once you're there, just taking a moment to settle whatever way feels best for you. Just giving your body a moment to digest the poses that we've done so far. Observing any differences within your body as a result of the poses. And just following your breath for a few cycles here. Now we'll come into a supine twist. So you can have your left leg out long on the mat. Bring a bend into your right knee to bring the sole of the right foot up onto the left thigh. Left hand can hold this top knee, right arm reaches up towards the ceiling. Stack your hips on top of each other, bringing your right hip on top to bring this knee over towards the left side of your mat and you can release your right arm back down to the right beside you. You can have your gaze up towards the ceiling or for more of a twist, you can look over at your right hand. Checking in on the right shoulder here, make sure it's still connected to the mat. And if you've found that it's come up off your mat, just reverse out of your pose a little bit until it's grounded again. So staying here for three minutes in total. Finding your breath, tapping into that twisting sensation. And if your body invites you to go a little bit deeper into this pose, you can gently use this left hand on your top knee and encourage it a little bit closer to the floor as long as you can keep that right shoulder connected to the mat. Take a moment here to relax your shoulders, loosen up your jaw, soften your facial muscles. And just let gravity do the work here. In your own time now, you can start to come out of the pose, coming back just to lie on your back, letting your spine realign itself against the mat. Noticing a big difference within the two sides of your body here. When you're ready, we'll take it to the other side. So the sole of your right foot comes up onto your left thigh. Right hand holds this knee. Left arm reaches towards the ceiling. Stacking your hips, this time bringing your left hip on top. Left arm releases back down to the left. You can look towards the ceiling or look over at your left hand. And this time aiming to keep that left shoulder connected to the ground.
taking just a few more deep breaths here. When you're ready, you can start to come out of the pose, coming back to lie on your mat. Starting to feel this buzz about your body, this positive energy that you've created. If you're ready to come back into a seat on the mat, you can slowly start to make your way back up. Coming into whatever seat feels best. I want to thank you so much for practicing with me today. I hope you enjoyed this yin yoga practice. If you did, make sure to check out this playlist. It has lots more yin yoga classes. And I also have lots of classes for beginners too. So please consider subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate that. And if you liked this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Until next time, namaste.